maybe you can shed us uh, some light on the ways that we can protect ourselves um, after COVID. There's many ways and many different protocols, and I don't want to present something and represent that as the only way to approach it, because there's many different ways to approach it. Uh, depending on the patient, there's different response rates, and there's economy, too. I mean, so often we get tied up into our intellectual stuff about we need to do this, 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 and this, and the patient either can't come close to affording it or can't come close to finding it. So we need to keep our suggestions, in addition to being effective, uh, as simple and obtainable and economical as possible. So the problem with the long haul COVID, okay, if you will, chronic COVID, is you have the persistence of the spike protein. I call it persistent spike protein, PSP syndrome. Long haul COVID patients, they have some degree of spike protein everywhere in their body, okay? They just manifest that the areas where it's most prominent, uh, you have a lot of CNS problems, concentration, memory, uh, headache, uh, seizure, strokes. Then you have the heart problem. So many people have had the heart problem and continue to have it, which is another problem too, because the troponin test, for example, detects when uh, a heart muscle cell is inflamed enough to start basically dying and releasing this protein into the blood. Meaning also never, never, never consider any elevation of the troponin test acceptable. Same thing along the lines of the D-dimer test, which is a measure of how quickly blood clots dissolve. And I think most of us realize at this point in time that uh, the vaccine, COVID, with and without the vaccine, has been associated with an astronomical number of thrombotic events, blood clots throughout the body, often the immediate cause of death when they're large enough. So this is the situation we face right now in dealing, there's a lot of easy ways to prevent it, okay? And some of the ways in which you prevent it are largely the same with how you treat it, you just treat it with higher doses and a more vigorous approach of the measures that you would use to prevent it. Specifically, the probably the best ways to prevent it involve uh, a regular dose of vitamin C, high dose, multigram, uh, along with uh, hydrocortisone. Most people, especially in the group that succumbs to an infection, are, succ are succumbing to it because they're not secreting enough cortisol in their body to push the vitamin C into the cell, which most people don't realize is the primary reason for cortisol to exist. Uh, the natural hydrocorticosteroid in your body, we all hear that prescription corticosteroids and cortic synthetic corticosteroids and cortisol are the most powerful anti-inflammatory agents known to man. Well, no. They're the most potent ways to push the most potent anti-inflammatory agent, namely vitamin C, inside the cell. So that's why they get that reputation. And that's also why long-term steroid use burns out because you just end up getting a lot of nonspecific effects on the body, but the body has no vitamin C left for you to push it inside the cell unless you're making that an active part of your treatment program. So. Uh, hydrocortisone with vitamin C, uh, very important uh, before, during, maintenance, after hydrogen peroxide nebulization. Uh, I have a number of examples that have shown that peroxide nebulization, and I don't recommend it this way, but it was proven in a situation where the people were so desperately poor, they couldn't afford anything else. But hydrogen peroxide nebulization alone easily prevents uh, COVID, and we have a study in Ghana that shows that over a thousand workers at a COVID hospital who opted to use a simple gargle of peroxide and a sniff in both nose once a day, zero COVID in those people, zero. Whereas a large group similar to that size chose not to do it, and 40% of them got COVID. So mm -hmm. it's very easy to prevent it. And once you have it, 
it's also pretty easy to get over it. Uh, hydrogen peroxide nebulization has, in this one study that I did with someone in Columbia, South America, was able to resolve 20 out of 20 cases of advanced COVID as a monotherapy in five days. So again, I wouldn't, I'm not recommending anybody do peroxide nebulization and nothing else, but never fail to make it part of your regimen.